it's always an issue, I think, to get uh, aircraft today. Uh, as we said last time, you have seven years to eight years wait for oh. both manufacturers, Boeing or Airbus. You have some issues, of course, with the engines. Uh, you saw what's happened with Pratt & Whitney. So we have a few issues on the engine side that we need to fix and that have been fixed by the OEMs. You saw Dubai Air Show last week was the biggest order since 2017. So the order book on, in Dubai was insane. Uh, you had MS that's made a huge order, Fly Dubai, Ethiopian made a big order. So there's a big demand. There's not enough supply, and that's the first issue. And even uh, since a lot of aircraft during COVID got so tired, it's extremely hard today for airlines to find aircrafts that they can operate. And that's one of the biggest issues. We spoke about it last time when we were here. We keep on seeing it more and more. And even the older, like 737-800 and the classics, are being asked to come back to the markets because we need them to fly them. And we see, again, during the Christmas season where there's a big need. You saw it last summer. I think we spoke about you guys going to Europe, which was the cost of tickets that was going higher and higher because of the demand and the lack of aircraft being provided. So I envision a desert in Arizona or New Mexico and a lot of 737s, a lot of 757s are sitting out there because they were decommissioned for whatever reason over whatever recent period of time. Can I just go grab one of those planes and refurbish them and put them back in the air? It's not as easy as you think. So if you want to get uh, what we call an aircraft airworthy again, uh, you have a long process to go again to put that aircraft back into service. Uh, you're not going to just come and fly it again. It needs an inspection. It needs what we call an AD inspection. It needs a uh, few inspections to get back, which are very costly. So the difference between the cost of getting it back and getting a new aircraft, that's where there's an arbitrage to be made. And we saw it in the last two to three years, where the cost of leasing a 737-800 or an A320, uh, not an EO, but an other generation, went to the roof. It went so expensive. So today, if you lease an aircraft, it's almost about 40 to 50 percent than it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a big demand, and that impacts, of course, the ticket prices. So, by the way, the big order was for set 777s, the 777, 777 okay. right? That's the Emirates X. order that you're talking about. 777X. 777X. Yes. Uh, and that's what? It's a much bigger plane, right? Yes. You like the single aisle. You like the 737s and the A320s. I like the 737, A320s. I love the A220, which is the, single, the smallest one that Delta operates a lot. We have lots of them with Delta and Air France. I love this because it's very uh, liquid. Uh, you can move them very quickly. You can, the cost of uh, fitting them to a different airline is much less. If you need to have a wide body fitted again to a different airline, the cost is very high. We're speaking about one to at least million of dollars to make it fit for basic, to make it fit to a new airline versus when it's a smaller one, when all economy class, I can move them very quickly between one airline and another one. What is the state of the OEMs, the Airbus and the Boeing, why are they having such a difficult time ramping up production? Yeah, I don't understand that. You know, I, uh, a couple years ago, I ordered a Mercedes G500 and it took about a year for them to make it. Now they only have one factory in Graz in Austria, right? So I get that and they're not making more than like 25,000 a year. These airline manufacturer airplane manufacturers are like the biggest companies in the world they have factories all over the place why can't they just get more uh, people in there and make more metal well first of all they don't have if you look at Boeing or Airbus they don't have factories all over the place they have a certain amount of factory each fa each assembly line it's not really a factory it's an assembly line each assembly line have a certain amount that they can produce every month uh, you know maybe Seattle like, uh, all of them have a certain amount that they can produce that's the first issue. So they cannot also produce. They produce what they can produce. Are they at producing at max? Yes, of course. They are they producing are? at max okay. capacity. They are doing their best to supply as much as okay. they can. But the second issue that you have to remember, that it was a COVID, that started doing COVID issue, is the supply chain. And if you look at all the supply chain, because you have to remember, Airbus and Boeing are assembler. They assemble yeah. everything that is provided to them. So Good all point. the back Good supply point. chain yeah. is a big issue. So, and it's not only in aircraft, it's, as you said, in cars, if you want to order a car today and you're a specialist in car, Matt, there's a big issue of finding a car. If I tell you today, go find a G400 diesel, it's almost impossible to find because us, the guys sold this, and the cost of a car or an aircraft is about 20% than before COVID. Right, so you've seen that huge inflation amount uh, as well. What are margins like for you? I mean, does that inflation eat into your margin or is the demand to lease aircraft still so strong? The Demand to these aircraft is very, very strong. Uh, there's a big demand. But you have to remember, all of us, of course, leverage our deals. We need to get debt. The cost of debt is what co kills us, I think, uh, on the deals. Okay. Because you have 70% to 80% of debt on each and one of them. And where does that debt come from? Do I go to the JP Morgan Chase and get a loan? Yeah, JP Morgan is active in that market. So you have two types of debt, of course, secured and unsecured debt. Uh, on, you have either 
the banks, uh, the, cap the, the banks that come and provide you a debt on it, you know, all the players from Bank of America to JP yep. Morgan to CC to the Japanese banks to the Chinese banks. And you used to have, which is a lot less active today, the capital markets. So before that, you can do an ABS, a securitization, and use that capital markets money, which was at that time cheaper. As of today, the capital markets for aviation is not very active for the last two years. It used to be a lot more active on the ABS side. I think in the next year or two, it might come back. But the capital markets was a very competitive way of financing aircrafts. Is private credit, does that play a role? Yes, of course, it's very active as well. Private really? credit, life insurance, uh, lots of insurance, uh, life insurance companies uh, land because the leases are seven years, eight years, 12 years. So it matches the maturity of the insurance, the life insurance companies. We've heard from some of the uh, just folks in the industry that India is going to be, is a big growth market and will continue to be a huge buyer of aircraft as they look to expand their fleets. Are you seeing that? Well, if you see the last order, this was uh, about three, four months ago of Air India, it was the biggest order was ever made. I think it was about 500 aircraft that they ordered. Wow. Okay. Uh, yep. So that order was huge. Yep. Um, Look, India, uh, with few airlines that are there, is an amazing jurisdiction. You can lease aircraft there. The issue that you have with India is how do you process aircrafts? Because in aviation, you have what you call a Cape Town uh, countries. So those countries that signed the Cape Town, uh, Cape Town Treaty allows you to repossess those aircraft. Repossess those yes. aircraft. Yes, it's okay. similar to Chapter 11 kind of treaty where you can go to those countries and they possess those aircraft. So if, they don't, so if an airline doesn't make its lease payment to you, you can literally go to that country and repossess. Exactly. Okay. But in India, you, it's, it's harder. Uh, okay. I don't believe as of yet, they're not a signatory of the Cape Town Treaty. You need to check, but I don't think they are. They are. So that's harder on those okay. countries that didn't sign the Cape Town Treaty to go repossess aircraft. So that's the hardest part for us. If someone doesn't make payments similar to a car in America, you go repossess that car and lease it to someone else. That's what we do in aviation. You can move it from one airline to one airline. It's a chapter 11. You do a possession. You fix okay. the, the car or the aircraft and you move it. How can you have, what is China? Is that, are they signatory to the Cape Yeah, Island? I believe so. I have yeah, to so, check. Yeah. Uh, it's, it changes on the monthly basis. I, I know that check. Russia, the, the Russian war in Ukraine threw kind of a wrench into that in terms of the, that region. Um, what has the Middle East been like since... Um, Hamas, uh, the Hamas-Israel conflict started. Has that has that been not notable in the business? In aviation, no. Uh, we didn't notice this. Um, you know, most airlines have been uh, were doing the best. Uh, if you look at Emirates, uh, Fly Dubai, all the airlines in the region are very active, are very operational. Like the, the profits are very interesting. Those airlines are really booming. Uh, so there is no impact. If we look at one of our clients, El Al in Israel, yes, there's a little bit of impact, but El Al was very open with us. Uh, they tell us every day what's going on. Uh, they give us a feedback. The government is supportive. So even for one of our clients, which is El Al in Israel, which, uh, with whom we have 577s, they, they are very open. They tell us everything, and that's what I love about El Al. They were always open uh, in business. They always told us during COVID about payments, how to fix it. So the relationship with El Al is amazing. They were very open airlines to work with. But